Welcome to our first ever NBC Kids online session. I'm so excited that we can still learn about the Bible in this crazy time. So can you guys do me a favor? Can you subscribe to this channel? And then throughout this session, can you guys comment below? Let me know your prayer requests. Let me know just, hey, how's it going? Just a shout out would be awesome. The next week I wanna go through and I just wanna um, see all of your comments and be able to respond to you guys. I wanna pray over you. I just want this to be an interactive experience. I don't want you to feel like you just have to watch it or pause it or whatever. I want you guys to be able to stop and be able to comment throughout. Even if it's something like, oh my gosh, yeah, I remember that as a kid, as parents. I just want you guys to be able to make this more of a community interaction. Again, I'm so excited about what we're about to learn. First off, you guys, if we can just take a moment and pray, I would love to just start our session through prayer. It's kind of what we always do in class. So if you guys could just take a moment and let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for this Bible study. God, I thank you for the things that you're gonna be teaching us, whether we're old or whether we're young, Lord, you always have something to teach us through your word. So Lord, I just pray for this time that we'd be able to hear your voice in this story. So a few weeks ago, when we met at church, we talked about how God protected his people from the Egyptians. He spared their lives by basically parting these waters and allowing them to walk through. And something that was so cool that I had missed before is not only did he part these waters, but the land that they walked on was dry, which is just insane to me to think of this giant sea and then having dry ground. And the reason why he did that was because they even had their animals with them. So if horses or cows or donkeys would get their feet stuck, then they wouldn't be able to move forward. So in and of itself, he even cared about the animals and God's people being able to walk through this dry land. After that, of course, as you guys know, he uh, caused the winds to die down. And as Pharaoh and his army were chasing on the heels of God's people, he allowed the waters to come through and Pharaoh and his people died, unfortunately, but God's people were saved. And so what we learned through that was that even in the hardest, craziest times, God still provides a way out. He still protects his people no matter what. And what we're about to learn about um, in just a moment, I think is really pertinent to the time that we're dealing with right now. Um, we're gonna see in a second about God's people complaining, getting frustrated about their situation. And I don't know about you, but this week I've definitely felt myself leaning towards complaining, getting frustrated, getting um, angry about being in isolation. And so we can learn a, a thing or two through God's people. So after the um, incident with them walking through this insane um, amount of water and just walking over dry land, and um, it seems like in their perspective, good, we're safe, we're sound, he's gonna take us to the promised land. But there were some like hiccups along the way. So what first happened was they started walking through this insane desert and there are no showers there's no water for them to bathe so they start to really stink and if you can imagine the smell not only stinky people but stinky animals so they start to whine about the smell then they start to get frustrated because their feet hurt obviously they are just walking in the desert so they get blisters their feet get swollen they're frustrated they're angry and then they have no food and they have no water so what's so cool is instead of God like raining the hammer down on them, getting really frustrated, he instead makes it rain bread. To me, that's insane. I can't even imagine going out or being outside and then all of a sudden bread is coming down out of the sky. But God wanted to show his people in such a drastic, incredible way that he was going to provide for them. So after they're eating bread, then of course, what? They get thirsty. So... He tells Moses, their leader, hey, take this staff, which is this giant um, rod of wood, and he says, go smack it on this rock. Well, Moses got ticked and smacked it too hard, but God still honored what Moses did and provided water through a rock in the middle of the desert. To me, this is just crazy. But again, God is providing for his people in such insane ways because he wants them to know I've got this, I've got you covered, I'm gonna provide. So at this point, you would think, 
okay, God's people are being cared for, they're being given shelter, they're being given water and food, but they're still frustrated and angry. And what's causing this frustration and anger is just this lack of purpose and this lack of order within their new community. In fact, they get so frustrated, they start to think maybe we should just run back to Egypt, become slaves again, because at least we had our homes and at least we had protection from this desert and we weren't in the middle of nowhere. That sounds crazy to me, but that was their thought process. So God leads them to a mountain and he has all the people hang out below the mountain and he tells Moses, go on top of this mountain. So for a few days, God has this crazy encounter with God. And in that, God gives Moses, what do we call it? That's right, the Ten Commandments. And those are rules that he wanted them to live by. Now, these weren't rules to make life horrible and not fun. These were rules to create structure and allow this new community of people to have a peaceful living. If you guys remember, since they were slaves, they didn't really have any leadership within their community. They didn't have people saying this is the right way to live. They just had people basically ordering them around all the time. And God didn't want his people living in fear anymore. He wanted them to feel like they were provided by him. And so that's why he created these rules. Some of them were in correlation between him and his people. So things like don't create any other idols. Now we think idol, what does that even mean nowadays? But that's things like don't put sports before me. Don't put a movie star or a rock star before me. Don't idolize superheroes before me. That's basically what they were doing. Another type of rules or the commandments that they were able to um, look at and that God gave them were between one another. So things as simple as, hey, don't kill each other, or hey, don't steal someone else's donkey, or hey, love one another. Those were the things that God wanted so that there again would be structure and that they wouldn't have to live by chaos. So God told Moses that he wanted to give these commandments to the people so that they knew that he was going to look after them, that he was gonna protect them no matter what. And so Moses went to the people and presented the commandments and he asked them, are you willing to obey these? The people said yes. But the problem was, it was hard to keep. I mean, some of these were like, don't lie. I mean, honestly, I break that, not all the time, but I do break that often. My kids break that often. I'm sure you break that at times. And so even though these commandments were good, it was just hard for the people to be able to continue to keep them. But guess what? God knew that. He knew that they weren't going to be able to fulfill all of these commandments for hundreds of years. And so in his perfect timing, he sent his son to the earth, someone who is completely blameless without sin, so that he could be the ultimate sacrifice. No longer would we have to make sacraments or sacrifices to God for our sin. Jesus came, he paid the ultimate sacrifice, and therefore we can have a relationship with God. How cool is that? So today, I just wanna encourage you guys, if you're feeling like, hey, I've never accepted Christ into my heart, I don't really even know what that means. I know that I've done some pretty bad stuff in my life, even if it's things like lying or cheating or stealing. I mean, I'll be honest, there are times I even this week stole my kid's donut. So technically I'd be breaking the 10 commandments, but, God wants a relationship with you. And so if you've seen that you maybe messed up even this week in our time of social distancing, that he wants a relationship with you. And it's just this simple. As we end this session, I'm just gonna ask for everyone to close their eyes and to pray. And if you're feeling that kind of tug in your heart saying, maybe this is the right thing for my life right now and that I wanna have a relationship with God, all you need to do in your heart as you pray is just say yes to God. And if you have your parents right next to you or your grandparents or whomever you're watching this with, 
tell them that decision that you made. This is a time not where we wanna hide, but we wanna celebrate this awesome choice that you made. When I made that relationship um, with the Lord, I was four years old, my dad was cooking dinner and I basically asked him, what is salvation and what does this look like? And I wanna have a relationship with God. And so just right then and there, I accepted Christ. It was so cool. And then you know what, we celebrated. And to this day, I don't look at red bell peppers the same because that was what we were cutting up when I accepted Christ. So take this time, if this is something that you're thinking and feeling and you wanna make that choice, take this time as a form of celebration, whatever that looks like to you. So let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you that despite social distancing, we're able to come together and we're able to hear your word and we're able to learn something new from the Bible. And I pray, Lord, for any student, any parent out there who's recognizing that they have maybe made some poor choices in life and that they need you to come in and to clean up their life. And Lord, I pray that you would be with each and every one of those people that saying yes to you, God. And all you have to do, if you're wanting to make that choice, all you need to do is just say yes to him. Lord, I just thank you for this time. Be with each and every student as they're out of school, Lord. Give parents patience in this season, Lord. We pray that you'd be with our politicians, you'd be with the doctors, Lord, that you would reign over this time, God. And I pray, Lord, that we would choose to have a thankful and appreciative heart, God, in this season, despite being um, cooped up, Lord, in your name, amen. Well, I'm so excited if you made that choice today. And if you did, would you just tell somebody around you, hey, I accepted Christ today. I said yes to God, because we want to celebrate with you. And also, I want to encourage you guys with our weekly challenges. We still want to keep that going, even though we're kind of cooped up in our homes. So this week, my challenge to you guys is to take some time and think about something that you normally take for granted. Let's say it's getting to play on your Xbox or your Nintendo Switch or getting to play with your LOL dolls. Whatever that may look like to you, can you guys take a moment and write your mom and dad a thank you card or tell your grandma, hey, thank you for that birthday money. I was able to do this with that. Something that you normally take for granted for, be able to just kind of think about it and be able to be thankful for it. So that's your weekly challenge. Thanks you guys so much for tuning in.